Hi, everyone. This is Erin Bendeley with the Pelican Institute for Public Policy in Louisiana. I am thrilled to be able to provide you some information today about a really great new program for Louisiana children and families. This is called the Louisiana Gator Program. You might have heard about it. Uh, LA Gator, it stands for Giving All True Opportunity to Rise, and it is going to revolutionize the way that we provide a quality education to meet the individual needs of our school children across the state. So I'm really excited to be joined today by my good friend, Ken Bradford. He is the Chief of Staff for the Louisiana Department of Education. And we're just gonna do a little informal chat today to give you the basics about the new LA Gator program, let you know what it is, how your child could benefit from it, and what exciting developments we have in store for the coming months as this program kicks off. So Ken, if you could start us out, tell us a little bit about what the LA Gator program is, and certainly school choice is nothing new to Louisiana. We've had efforts in the past and programs that have benefited thousands of children, but how is this one different? Yeah, thank you, Dr. Bendeley, for, for the invite today to, to participate. Um, yeah, well, as you're aware, this, this was Act One. It was the first piece of legislation signed and enacted by the governor. And what it's going to do is it's going to it's going to create for the first time ever an edu education scholarship account ESA an education scholarship account for parents to use for their for their child's uh, education and so it's a publicly funded government authorized savings account um, it's really diverse in that it'll be able to be used for private school tuition assistance tutoring online learning and other approved expenses by our by our state board. That's great, very exciting. Who is eligible for this program? Yeah, so the eligibility for the for the LA Gator program, it's, it's actually divided into three phases. So I'll, I'll take my time here and go through each, each of the phases. And I should preface this with uh, the number of enrollments that are available for an education savings account in each phase is dependent on the legislative appropriation. So for phase one of, of the program to be eligible to participate, uh, you have to be at least in one of the meet one of the following qualifications as a Louisiana resident. So I'll go through those four for you, Dr. Bendley. The, the first one is a student that has participated in the Louisiana scholarship program for the previous school year, student that is entering kindergarten, a student that was enrolled in a public school for the previous school year, or a student who is from a family with a total income at or below the 250% of the federal poverty guidelines. So again, we, we're gonna have three different phases. And in phase one, based on the legislative appropriation, uh, it will be those four indicators which which demonstrate whether a student is or a family is or is, is not qualified. And then I would just further add to that that certainly there may be more requests in phase one than there are actual education savings accounts available. And so Within each phase, we will, the board has adopted a policy to prioritize how those uh, enrollments would occur. So I'll, I'll, I'll walk through those real, real quick. So phase one, uh, let's just say we open registration March 1st, which is what the, the act requires. Uh, so the registration system opens. And then in phase one, we have several thousand registrations, but we, we can't fund all of them. This is how the priority would work in phase one. So the number one priority would be our students who are currently participating in the Louisiana Scholarship Program or the LA Gator Program. That's always your, your priority number one in phase one. Priority number two is students from a family with a total income at or below the 250% of the federal poverty guidelines or students who are identified as having a disability under the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. The third thing in the priority would be siblings of students currently participating in the Gator program. And finally, would be our other eligible students. So that would take us through phase one uh, eligibility. And then if we were to get have enough funding and we get to a 
phase two, what happens in phase two is the income threshold goes up in, in phase two to 400% of the federal poverty guideline. And then once all of those uh, priority students and we met all of the demand in a phase two, we then could go to a phase three, which is all students in Louisiana would be eligible. That would kind of be the, the universal. So we've got it structured and set up so that it's three different phases. And then within each phase of enrollment, we have a priority set up. Well, it sounds like the legislative appropriations, which is basically how much money the legislature and the governor decide to dedicate to this program, it sounds like that's going to be pretty important. We'll talk about that a little bit more here in a few minutes. But before we go on, so uh, choice programs in Louisiana to date have largely uh, allowed families to choose a private or a non-public school on a full-time basis. But yet one of the most exciting things I think about the LA Gator program is families will now have a lot of opportunities beyond that. Can you describe what some of those might be? Yeah, I think you bring up a good point, Dr. Bendley, in that, you know, most of our previous choice programs, what, what was occurring was uh, a student may participate in the scholarship program and then they can go and they can attend a, a non-public school private school. But I, I think here what 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 we're seeing is that th think of it about services. So you you have this education savings account with a dollar amount in it. And that may be one of the things that you choose to do. You 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 may choose to use your dollars to be put towards that 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 tuition at a at a non-public school. However, you may be home based um, and you, you may want to purchase some other things that, that would be available, which, which for example, uh, supplementary education materials, career and technical education, um, assessments, educational therapies, post-secondary dual enrollment. So you could get college credit, perhaps through like an advanced placement online course or a have your tuition paid for a dual enrollment at one of your local universities. Tutoring, so the students could get tutoring services. Uh, the technology and software supporting education. So that, you know, that could mean a, a, a Chromebook. It could mean an iPad, uh, you know, a laptop, uh, a monitor. Um, and then school uniforms would be another one. And, and, and one that I, you know, I've always heard talked about and it, 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 that could be leveraged under this program. And I, I think it's a great idea. And, and that is a, that's a navigator, um, a parental uh, a navigator to provide navigation services. So think about that. Think of it this way: you you receive a set of dollars in your education savings account to go spend on these services, and you're trying to figure out like how do I want to best use my dollars to meet the needs of my individual student? Well, that's where this specialist would work with you, this this parent navigator to help you customize this plan for your students. So a lot of times today in the school setting, you know, you might have a professional school counselor working with you, a graduation coach, et cetera. And that's kind of like what our parent navigators would do. They would they would they would be available um, as one of the options for for students in their ESA accounts to to help direct those dollars for their family. That's great and so helpful to families to know that they have all these choices now because kids aren't alike. Kids have different strengths, different interests, different needs. And so this really sounds like it's going to really open up their possibilities to really find something that works for them. That's incredible. So again, you mentioned money and I have to ask, how much money are we talking about that will be in families' accounts to be able to support this kind of education? Yeah, so it's approximately $5,000 um, for, for a student. And I think you know, thinking through this and just to give a, a little more insight into this, uh, the department uh, last week, we we had ran a process for a program manager to design this platform for parents to be able to ad administer this this account. Um, and so that particular contract was approved by the state board. It was then last Friday, it was approved by the Joint Legislative Committee on Budget, JLCB. 
And what that platform does is it sets up the infrastructure. And, and so right now, think of it like this platform is being built. The company is, is Odyssey. And that's what's going to allow the, the parent to enroll in, uh, on, on March 1st, request their enrollment, request an account. And then what we'll do here at the department is once that legislative appropriation you know, comes through, we hope this, this appropriation comes through, uh, we will then take that, that student, that, that family list that is applied, we'll go through the, the phases and the priority list, but, but that set of dollars will then be put into their account. Think of it perhaps like uh, if you were to have um, like money put into account and then you want to go buy your educational services and what this platform will do, we'll, it will have a marketplace. So the parents can go spend those dollars in that marketplace. I liken it to Amazon. If you're, if you're looking for a particular, let's just say a laptop to be able to do your work, you would be able to type that in the search feature of the marketplace and then the eligible laptops that are eligible to be purchased could be purchased. And it, then that would be debited against the dollars that were allocated to you as a family. And what if a child has special needs or if, if it's a family that, um, you know, is economically disadvantaged, would, would they, there be any extra resources to address the needs of those children? Yeah, so so there would be that additional funding for the students that were identified with with disabilities, um, and then there would also be uh, items for them to use to potentially help address those disabilities um, in the marketplace. Or it could be one of those those services that I talked about, some of those therapeutic services um, that that would be available for them in the marketplace. And then look, one of you know there might be more than one family member. So again, we go back to that algorithm about the federal poverty line being 250% of the federal poverty line. There's a base number that gets you to the 250% of the federal poverty line, but then the algorithm is run by the number of individuals in the household, which then determines, and that's a table, and we're going to probably talk about this later about what, you know, where can you go for more information and when it'll be posted, but we will have that table posted, which shows the 250% in phase one or the 400% of the federal poverty line in phase two, also um, showing like if you have a, this number in your family, this is what this is the dollar amount for that family income to meet the threshold to be put into that phase. That's great. I've heard a lot of questions from homeschool families. Obviously, these are individuals that have been customizing their child, children's education for a long time, really out of pocket as they are paying taxes to, to support public education uh, at the same time. Is this something that current homeschool families might be able to take advantage of? Yeah, so, you know, current families are not able to participate if they're currently in a Bessie approved home study or in a non-public school not seeking state approval simultaneously with the program. I think the way that I would view this as like a new option, another option for the family. So you have public school, charter school, um, private school, non-public school, et cetera. You have home homeschool. Think of this as, as what we call home-based education. And, and so here, you know, those, those families that are currently doing homeschooling uh, with a Bessie approved home study program, you know, they may want to take a look at this and see, hey, what, what if, if I were to transition from doing that into uh, the LA Gator program, how could I build that customized education package for my student? So again, I, I would just say this is the, the LA Gator program is, is providing a new option for home-based education with the funding attached um, to it. Well, that certainly might be attractive for a lot of families who um, might not mind uh, adhering to the requirements of the program in order to be able to, to have the resources to support their child's education. So let's talk about those requirements. Uh, what are the strings attached, if you will? What what are the requirements that families would have to agree to in order to take advantage of this program? Yeah, great question. I I, I figured we'd talk about that today. So I, I I had the team for me just just really try to distill this for me about what what the requirements is and and, and basically. Families are going to need to to agree to a, a set of attestations to to receive their their LA Gator scholarship and get that account established. Um, 
I won't go through the full list, but but I'll I'll hit five or six here of the the key things that that they would be you know attesting to. One is providing for the education of the participating student in at least the subjects of English language arts, mathematics, social studies, and science. Uh, using the account funds only for qualified education expenses of the participating student. So, you know, this an example here is you're you're going in and you're using some of your dollars to get a laptop so a kid maybe could take that online advanced placement course they've been wanting to take. Well, you're attesting that that laptop is being purchased and is going to be used by that student um, for that particular purpose. Another one is the student participating in student assessments as required by Bessie policy, um, including any uh, transportation to and from any such testing location. Uh, comply with the acceptable uses of the ESA funds and responsibilities of the account holder. Uh, and then immediately disenroll um, from the LA Gator program should should their student uh, go and enroll in a public school or a Bessie approved home study program. And then finally, attest that the student is not participating concurrently in the in a Bessie approved home study program. So, you know, I think that there uh, and then we have in here a, a clause also about uh sharing students, uh, you know, information so that we can have the assessment performance information and, you know, evaluate the the program accordance within state law. And, uh, you know, possibly time to time, we, these are audited. So you'd have to be able to participate in an audit if you're giving the dollars for a laptop, um, you know, that could be audited to ensure that uh, the laptop was purchased and is being used for the educational purposes. I, uh, Doug Manley, I would also elaborate on, I just want to come back to this marketplace because one of the things that that is talked about a lot is um, sometimes I think there's misconceptions about what can get purchased with the dollars and how, how is it that we ensure that, you know, a barbecue grill, a lazy boy sofa, things that aren't educational in nature aren't being used. And you can assure that that our vendor that we have identified to run our platform that will be managing this marketplace ensures that only those things that are eligible for expense, like that's the first line of defense is that things are only gonna be in the marketplace that you can purchase and procure for the educational services. So you're not gonna find those items and be eligible to, to, to purchase those. You know, sometimes you hear they do a reimbursement. We're not, this is not reimbursement based program. This is, it's in the marketplace and the department is going to be working very closely, not only with the program administrator Odyssey, but with, with the different vendors to ensure that those that are providing the, the things that our families might need, are adequate, appropriate, and we get those put in the marketplace so that they're eligible for families to, to make that purchase. But don't go looking in there for things that aren't educational related. It, it, it's not going to be the the, the the space for that. That's really important. And also, I think those rules and regulations seem quite reasonable for a family that wants to participate. And I know you guys have worked really hard to make sure that this is not uh, a program full of red tape and bureaucracy that's going to require a ton of unnecessary paperwork or unnecessary steps. So you guys have done a, a great job, and I know Odyssey is off to a great start to make sure that this is a smooth process, not only for families that are registering and using the program, but also the schools and providers and vendors that will be in the marketplace as well. So that's great. I want to go back to something you said about assessments. Can you tell us what options uh, schools and families will have in terms of selecting the assessment that their child will take and how often do kids have to be tested um, and in what subjects? Yes. So I think uh, on that particular one, that that is the assessment, uh, you know, what assessment perhaps, let's just say, what assessment would a, you know, fifth grader or an eighth grader have to take as participating in the Gator program? These will be norm referenced assessments that are determined by the state board that will be eligible and, and we will make that information available as, as we keep working on, on that list of assessments. You know, but when I when I hear assessments, I also think of it as only like not just what assessment might be a requirement for me as a parent when I sign that attestation, knowing that, you know, my students are going to need to do some sort of test as approved by the state board. 
But think about some of those optional assessments that might be out there for for parents that aren't even required as part of the program, but you would want to use. So think about it as if a if a student were to take um, take particular coursework in, let's say, advanced placement. Well, that advanced placement has an assessment. So maybe they want to use some of their dollars to go pay for an advanced placement exam. A student might want to use some of their dollars to take an ACT assessment. So they have an ACT score, college going score. Um, there are career inventory assessments. Maybe they work with their navigator and the navigator, you know, the parent says, look, I'm not really sure what my son or daughter wants to, to do in, in their career. Well, there's a career assessment that would be an option for them to perhaps um, purchase with their dollars and, and do the do the career assessment. Or it could be a student that's just taken an extremely rigorous uh, academic content course on the high school level. And the parent says, you know, that was a that was a really tough course. How about uh, we let our we let our child go take a CLEP exam and see if they can earn that college credit to go and use that at one of our, our at one of our state universities? So I think there's there's assessments in two areas. There's assessments to say what's an assessment that will be required of the program for parents, which is a, a set that will be identified by by the state board. But then there's also hey, what other assessments are going to be available for me in the marketplace that I can use as a as as a parent to either get my kids credit, gauge their learning, or help them identify a good career. That's such a good point. I feel like a lot of times families hear this and they assume that it's just the leap test that their child will have to take. When actually, this is so much more broad than that. Uh, families and schools will get to choose from a number of different assessments uh, that test primarily in English and math. But to your point so many more opportunities to gauge student learning and open up opportunities uh, for college credit, career and technical credentials, and so much more. So that's very yeah. exciting. And look, if you're you're a parent and your your students taking assessments and they realize like, hey, look, we, we have a deficiency here. There's, there's a weakness in this particular area of the academics. They have that online uh, online or face to face tutoring offerings, you know, that we're going to have in the in the marketplace so they could get some some tutoring services for that. So, yeah, that's great. Well, you mentioned earlier a possible sign up period beginning March 1st, and I know that that is the latest date. Uh, that you all and Odyssey will be able to open up the portal for families to register. Uh, any chance that might open up a little earlier? Is might that be in the works? Yeah. So we. So yeah. Just to 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 hit on that. So March in the in Act One, the legislation, um, it stated that the department would select a program administrator, like the platform, which would allow uh, parents to enroll their students, and then it would host that that marketplace. So so we have done that. We've identified that, and now we're working with Odyssey. And we expect that in early December of this year, uh, what we will do is we will launch an FAQ on their website. As well as on, uh, on that website, we're going to start having tutorials so that parents will be able to say, hey, how do you enroll a student? They'll be able to click a tutorial and it will walk them through how, how you would actually register um, and en enroll your student. Uh, that actual website that we're working with will be uh, www with odyssey.com uh so again www with odyssey.com as as soon as this is live and we will have that link from the department webpage because you know we also have information up uh on the louisiana department of education website you can just google louisiana department of education it'll bring you you can find our louisiana believes website you can click the louisiana gator scholarship program pdf tab um, and go in. But, you know, the law is clear. We have to start enrolling students by March 1st, which is why it was so important that that last week we we got that contract approved by the legislature. And now we can move forward uh, and start working with our, our program manager vendor, Odyssey, to get these things that you're talking about in place. So summary, you'll find them two places. I've given the direct, direct link to Odyssey. We've started building tools they will be there with with the goal of having the turn on date for March 1st to be able to enroll should be hopefully a very simple process. Uh, 
Uh, there'll be tech support if you know you're getting complications, and then always on our department website, uh, LouisianaBelize.com, and click the Louisiana Gator Scholarship Program. Well, it sounds like this is the time for families to get their questions answered. Certainly a lot of activity happening over the winter before this portal opens up. So we encourage everyone to really dig in, see if this is something that might be useful to you or someone in your family or someone that you know. A lot of information is out there. Uh, we would also encourage you to go to a page on our website uh, that we've put out there with a lot of answers to frequently asked questions, links to where you can find all of the program regulations. Uh, it's called a school that fits.com. Again, that's a school that fits.com. We partnered with the Department of Education to provide a lot of information to get you started. So we would encourage you to take advantage of that. Um, and there's a place where you can sign up for updates too. So as more information comes out, we'll be partnering with Ken and his team to make sure that we get that to you. I'll mention one last thing, and we talked about it earlier um, in this webinar, and that is the fact that this program annually is going to be supported by whatever amount of money the legislature chooses to approve for it. And so that means that if this is something that you believe is important and you believe that your child or children across the state can benefit from, your lawmakers need to, to hear that from you. And so we'll give you a way that you can engage um, and make sure that this is prioritized. Uh, as lawmakers look across all of the needs of state government, we certainly would encourage them to support a good, strong launch of this program uh, because we know there are a lot of children in need that could really benefit from it. Uh, so we'll give you plenty of ways to, to sign up and, and engage in, in that effort. Uh, but in the meantime, please take this time. I, I know a lot of you over the winter holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, et cetera, uh, will, will use that time to think about the next school year. And so this is something that's going to launch with the next school year, uh, starting in fall of 2025. So now's the time to get ready, get the information that you need, get your questions answered, and get involved. Um, this is really exciting, Louisiana is one of about a dozen states that is starting a program like this. Um, and we're looking forward to a lot of great uh, opportunities for our children and for our state. I wanna thank you, Ken, for joining us today. Thank you for all that you're doing uh, and that your team is doing at the Department of Education to make LA Gator a success. Uh, and we look forward to providing more information like this for you uh, to make sure that we provide a school that fits for every Louisiana child. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bendeley.